Welcome to The Perfect Song. And today we'll be talking about the 1976 single from Boston, More Than a Feeling. Um, this song was huge back in the day. Um, it was uh, written by Tom Scholz, and uh, it took him five years to complete. Uh, he And he wrote the lyrics based on the idea of losing someone close uh, and on the way which music can connect a person to memories of the past. Hmm. Um, it was named by uh, by a VH1 poll, I guess, uh, the 39th best hard rock song of all time for VH1 <laughs> listeners or viewers, I guess. It's considered hard rock. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, I would I, I would say it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's list of the. Uh, and this isn't a ranked list, but it's just one of the 500 songs that shaped rock and roll, and I can kind of see that. And uh, ranked 212 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. So for me, this song is is a song that I heard in back when it was popular, at least very soon after it had come out, because I had older brothers, and and also it's just. If you listen to the radio in the 70s, this song was going to be playing at some point. Um, and I think at the time, I didn't necessarily think much of it. I just thought it was a fine song. I probably felt how I felt about any song that came on the radio. How about you? Do you guys remember hearing it back in the day? I remember I remember vividly the first time I heard it, actually. It was on... Uh... I was in the back of my now, who was my now brother-in-law's uh, Pontiac Trans Am, <laughs> and he was playing it on his eight track. That is uh, the play- perfect. That is the perfect way to hear this song: eight track and a Trans Am. And and he had the Roach clip hanging from the rearview mirror. So that I remember vividly hearing it. Wow. It was that and Fog Hat um, were the two that he played <laughs> all the time. Nice. So um, so I know exactly when I heard it, and I mean I'm in a Trans Am. I'm in the seventies and <laughs> I mean, perfect. I, I, perfect. I mean, I, that I had a reaction as a, I, I think I was like seven or eight at the time. <laughs> so it's like, my reaction is like, this is cool. This is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was my first exposure to it. Nice. Yeah. I wish I had such a crystal clear evocative memory of the first time I heard it, but I'm pretty sure the first time I heard it was probably on the radio in my room. Mm. Uh, but I definitely heard it. Uh, actually, I don't think I was living in the United States when this came out. So, but when I got back in 77, that's probably when I heard it. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I remember hearing it all the damn time back then. You couldn't get away from this song. Yep, it was everywhere, and I th- oh. I remember liking it. It wasn't uh, it wasn't one of my favorites, but I remember liking it. Sure. So the song's lyrics talk about um, how a song takes him back to to a memory, and it's and it's sort of drenched in sort of nostalgia, which is funny because now, as I'm thinking about it and how we're talking about it, there is a big feeling of nostalgia for this song. So it's like it's very meta. It's kind of exciting. Um, yeah. I wrote down that it's a nostalgic song that ev- uh, evokes strong memories about how a song can evoke strong memories. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it starts out, you know, acoustic guitar kind of fade in. And then um, and the very first one of the first lines he says, I, I, you know, I wake up and I turn on some music to start my day, you know, and then uh, it kind of climbs and gets to this. uh guitar slide and then a sustained note and then the second there guitar comes in and the chorus comes in it looks like the first part is the the moment of sitting in his room and and hearing the song and kind of being wistful and then when the chorus comes in he's at like a 70s stadium rock show with clapping i mean it's just such a memorable guitar like lick there The song has a very much up down energy thing going to it and takes you on uh takes you on a bit of a emotional trip that mirrors exactly what he's singing about you know what did you guys feel as you were listening to it this time well this 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 is kind of a personal peeve of mine 
Okay. Um, I really, really, really dislike songs about listening to songs. Okay. So that is much. A very I, specific peeve. It, it really is. <laughs> and I really dislike them. Um, mm. It's kind of like when you watch a movie about making movies, there's been very nah, few yeah. that, that have been really well done. Mm-hmm. I actually um, have a similar peeve, which is I hate songs about how hard it is to be touring on the road. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. So, b- books about writing a book. You know, it's like, it's like no. <laughs> so any any stuff like that, I just really just don't like. And this is one of those times where it's like when well, I listen to it. that's what he's thinking about. Yeah. How would you feel about a song about making a movie? <laughs> Hey, and, and some of those are been pretty good. A song about how hard it is to work on a movie. <laughs> for me, it it doesn't lyrically, which is where I'm going for on this one, is okay. doesn't hold hold a lot of weight for me. Mm. Well, um, in, to be fair, in the chorus and the outro chorus, um, or when he comes out of the chorus, he he sings about a specific the specific memory that the song is evoking. Like I think, like hearing the song yeah. is the is the jumping off point but then he starts saying it's reminding me of mary ann leaving me and that's sort of the what it's really about but yeah he does go back to like how music makes him feel it's very sort of yeah. referential to it's a song about how a song how songs make him feel yeah or, and, and and that's okay i mean a, a lot of people like that i just it's just yeah. again it's a pet, it's a pet peeve of mine and i just really okay. don't like that got it um, and, and, and I'm only talking lyrically only. But there's a lot in this song that with musically that you could argue there's a lot in it that if, if it was if an instrumental, I could see it. Okay. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I have to say, I, I know, Al, you need to do yours too, but I, I think the vocal uh, the vocal line in this and the way he sings it and the way the guitar is kind of parallel and intertwined with him, I think that's really um, pretty amazing. I mean, I think it's pretty impressive. His voice is kind of, you you know it might be an acquired taste a little bit it's kind of like it's not shrill it's just it has a certain quality to it that maybe isn't too pleasing but i think it works and the way they made the guitars kind of sing with him i guess you could say i kind of like that kind of works i like that quality too i like the um well, so when i think of this song i mainly think of the chorus i don't really think about like the verses so much and I really like the the crunchy kind of rhythm, <laughs> coupled with that sort of singing guitar, you know, melody line. I get. I'm not a musician, so I don't know. Right. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I think. I think that's right. I think melody. that's. Yeah. I think. Uh, I, I googled melody, and it seems similar to what I just said. And so I do like that. I. It's funny. I never thought about it until just now, but it. It it's now starting to bug me that it's a song about a feeling, but it's called more than a feeling. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it should be just a feeling, <laughs> which is a great song by the Throwing Muses. Maybe yeah. that should be I don't know on the list. Maybe. Anyway, uh, so I I like this song. I think it's a I think it's very emblematic of the late seventies. Like there's a handful of songs that I think could stand for the late seventies rock scene. And this is one of them. And maybe, you know, I don't know, like a Led Zeppelin song or some other. Sure. I think you're right. Yeah. And so yeah, I think it's iconic for that reason. I think it's a good song too. I, it, I think uh, I, there's a cover of it that uh, Slater Kenny used to do in their live shows mm. so that I really liked as well. It was a little, yeah. obviously a little more stripped down than this version. But yeah, no, I, I, it is very evocative of a time and it gives me more than a feeling about the seventies. <laughs> Then you know its work is done here. <laughs> oh my God, that was the dumbest thing I ever said. <laughs> oh no, no, no! You've said many dumber things than that. Oh yeah, who, who are we kidding? <laughs> we hope you're enjoying this Gen Explainers podcast. Remember to find us and follow us on social media. Give us a like, a follow, or support us on Patreon. And we'd much appreciate a five star rating on the podcast platform of your choice. Now let's get back to the show. All 
All right. So, okay. Well, I mean, we can get to it. I, I sort of mentioned, like, I said what parts of the song and the structure of it that I like. So would, could we consider this? And I think I know Mike's answer, but is this a perfect song? Let's start with Mike on this. Go ahead. <laughs> the answer would be no for me. Right. Um, I, I think you, you music... mentioned, you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned if it were an instrumental, maybe. Yeah, purely from the instrumentation and the and the the, the melodies of the and the music and and the guitars, all all that stuff works really well. Mm. And again, the it comes down to the lyrics for me in this song, and that's the the one thing that I cannot put it at because I I don't think the the lyrics other than yeah, anybody could listen to it and say oh yeah, I, music does make me feel that way, but I don't give a shit um how how the lyrics of uh, uh, how a song makes you don't care about your feel their feelings <laughs> yeah people in their about feelings. the song makes you go to hell <laughs> you with your feelings and your emotions this, no one this was them. less than a feeling this is less than a feeling for me <laughs> okay so if he had written it and the lyrics were about oh i don't know a rock lobster Bunnies. or something <laughs> That would Rock be Lobster. fine. I, th I, th I think that the music in this song goes really well with the lyrics to Rock Lobster. I, I think someone out there should do. <laughs> yes. Uh, a more a than mash a up. mash up. And Rock Lobster <laughs> mashup. <laughs> I hope you can get Fred Schneider involved. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all right. Uh, Al, what do you think? A perfect song? I uh, I am going to give it a qualified, no, it's not a perfect song, but it, it is highly iconic and emblematic of a time period. Um, and I really, I do like, I'm going to agree with Mike in the sense that I like the music more than I like the lyrics. Also, and I don't know if you mentioned this, like when I did a little research in this, you know, the song's like, oh, I, I see my Marianne walking away. Well, Marianne's just his cousin. It's his cousin, right? Well, but I and, think he just shows it for the name, the way the musicality of the name. I think he's thinking about it would be a lover, not his cousin, but. No, but then you he's interviewed and he says like when he first met his cousin, when he was a little kid, she was really oh, okay. beautiful and he had a, a crush on her. Uh, um, all right. So then I was just like, I don't know. I, now I feel weird. I don't know. Anyway. Well, so see, Mike, it's not about listening to music. It's about creepy incest. Yeah, there you go. So you, I know you dig that, so maybe you like it now. That's one of your favorite things <laughs> in life, that's, I'm that's, pretty that's sure. That's one of my fetishes, not my peeves. <laughs> oh, we learned so much about you. Uh, so I don't think it's perfect. I think it's good. I think it's iconic. I don't think it's perfect, mainly because I'm, like the verses don't really do much mm. for me. I... I agree completely with what you said, Alan, and how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. Or I would have completely, if I hadn't, on this latest listening, realized how the experience of listening to it was exactly the experience of him singing about it, which annoys Mike. But at the same time, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, because that's exactly what it's doing. It doesn't remind me of a girl walking away. It reminds me of being in my house in the 70s as a little kid. And it was evocative and it totally worked. So I have kicked it up and I'm saying it is a perfect song and maybe it's a qualifier, but it's a perfect song for bringing you back to a place uh, in, of memory, of nostalgia. So that's my but, but you had to have had that memory. This is true. Like, the, no, like if I play I this guess... for my son, he's not. That's not going to be evocative to him of anything. But when he's fifty-two, <laughs> he'll think, "Oh, this brings me back to when my dad made me listen to this song <laughs> for his dumb <laughs> podcast." <laughs> it's like a hundred years old. This fucking song. <laughs> this effing song. Okay. All right. Well, awesome. I, th I think we should be allowed to swear. Uh. I think we're allowed to. I just have to say there's explicit and then they put a little E on it. Mm. I think. Ooh, Doesn't that make it more inter to. interesting? Like to young people? <laughs> kids love the swearing. My kids do. Well, sure. It's exciting. All right. Well, that, that does wrap it up for this, uh, this episode. Boston's more than a feeling. Let us know what you think um, in the comments or just come on to our houses and let us know. Come on by. Uh, thanks, guys. Another great episode, and uh, see you soon. Bye. bye. Say bye. Thank you, Mike. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to this Gen Explainers podcast. Follow us on Instagram and friend us on Facebook. Just search for Gen Explainers and find us on Patreon, where you can support the channel and gain access to extended cuts of the podcast as well as exclusive bonus content. See you next time. Thank you.